Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough on the event campaigns in Star Trek Online. To begin, what are the event campaigns? Well, event campaigns are year-long campaigns that Cryptic run to heavily reward players that remain active throughout the year and participate in certain events. These are often run between other events to encourage people to keep logging on at various points throughout the year. Not every event counts towards the event campaign. Things like the Red Alerts, the Anniversary Summer and Winter events do not count. These events are often run in between those to make sure people have a reason to keep playing the game. Eligible events will be listed on the events tab of the journal alongside your current progression and the possible rewards. To navigate to the events window, you have two ways to get there. You can hit J to open the journal window, or you can go to the bottom left of your minimap, marked with 1 on the screen. Hit that, that'll open up the journal window, and then you're going to go to the events tab, marked as 2, and then go to the event campaign, marked under 3. On that event campaign window, you're going to see all of the info for the event campaign, your current progression, the eligible events, the reward info. If you hit reward info, it'll give you a full list of all the potential prizes. There is quite a bit, and you'll certainly want to do your research before selecting. Now, let's take a look at how long it takes to actually complete the year-long event campaign. So, you need 3,500 progress to get your reward, and each day that you run, one of the events will get you plus 50 progress, so that's 70 days worth of progress you need. Cryptic runs five events throughout the year, and each one of them will run for 21 days. So you do have quite a bit of room if you do miss some days here or there. I do want to note that this is something I have seen a lot of people miss, especially newer players. You still get rewards after you complete each of the individual events. A lot of these, they'll run for 21 days, and there will be a reward that you receive after running the event for 14 days. An example being we just had one that gave us a Marshall Janeway Bridge Officer after running Lupiter Erratus for 14 days. Now, if you kept running Lupiter Erratus for the remaining 7 days of the event, you were still getting plus 50 progress per day. And if you really want to speed things up a little bit more, the day that you claim the prize from that event, so the day you claimed the Marshall Janeway Bridge Officer, you immediately were able to go back in and run the event again, and you would get another 50 progress. So make sure on the day that you actually claim your prize that you're going right back in and running it again, because that does reset as soon as you claim the overall prize from that specific event. So it takes you 70 days worth of progress. That means you need to run, as a free-to-play player, you need to run three of these full events, and a week into the fourth event, you will get your prize. Now, of course, there is a way to pay and speed run the event campaigns. It's what a lot of people do. And here are the steps to speed run the event campaigns. This is very handy, especially if you get started later on and want to get caught up. So the first step is to immediately buy out an event as soon as it goes live. Do not play the event before you buy it out. Buying an event out will cost you 2,000 Zen, which is 20 US dollars, and that will immediately give you 700 progress. After you buy it out, you will then go and play it every single day for the full duration of the event, and that will net you an additional 1,050 progress from running it the 21 days. So between buying it out and then running it for the full duration, that means you can get 1,750 progress from the first event. That is half of what you need to get the event campaign fully completed. You repeat that for the second event of your choice, and upon completion of the second event, you will be at the full progress bar, and you may claim your campaign prize. So, are you screwed if you started late? If you're a free-to-play player and you're not able or willing to put money into the game and have no zen, then you must start working towards the event campaigns during the second qualifying event. That means if you're a completely free-to-play player and you're unable or unwilling to put Zen in at any point throughout this year and you did not start during the first or second events, you have already missed it for the 2022 event campaign. Your only hope is being able to go in and buy one of the prior events out at some point throughout the next year. If you have Zen and are willing to buy out events, you can do the approach I mentioned in the previous slide, and you could start as late as the beginning of the fourth event and you would still be able to complete the event campaign. 
You can also buy out any of the previous events that you missed via the events window for 2000 Zen, the $20. That will immediately give you 700 progress per event you buy. These are also listed in the C store, which I will show on the next slide. So if you're not familiar with how to get to the C store, I've got it shown on this screen here. If you take a look at the picture, there's a button at the bottom left of your minimap. It's got a little gold yellowish icon there. And I've got one marked right above it on the picture. Hit that. Now go over to where you see two at the left side and go to the event buyout. And then you need to look for what I have marked in three on whatever you click there. When you are trying to get the second chance buyouts to help you with your event campaign progress, you need to make sure that the thing you're buying out is actually giving you event campaign progress. Not everything that is on this list will. Uh, if you look at what I have on screen now, that first contact day event buyout is not going to help you out, but the bottom two would. So make sure you're looking at the description of what you're buying and make sure it mentions the event campaign progress. If you don't want to go through the C store uh, directly here, you can also go through the event window that I showed you before. If you missed out on any of those previous events, there will be a buyout option at the bottom of it, and that will guarantee that you're buying the right thing if you go through that window. So just be vigilant and make sure you're buying the right thing because you don't want to buy like the first contact day event buyout and then realize it didn't do anything to help you. Now let's take a look at the event campaign prizes. So you have three different choices here, and the first one is by and far the most popular. It is the Premium Tier 6 Starship Choice Pack. This gives you your choice of any lockbox or promotional ship that was released in the years prior to the year of the event campaign. It will unlock whatever ship you choose for a single character. Now the value of this option varies quite significantly. The, the lockbox ships and the promotional ships all vary heavily price-wise. The cheapest lockbox ships are usually going to be in the five to 600 million EC range. That's going to be around 40 US dollars, while the most expensive promo and lockbox ships can be about 1.8 billion EC or around $140. So some of these ships can be very expensive to obtain if you're not obtaining them free through this event. So hopefully you can understand why people would be very happy to obtain a ship that would traditionally cost them, you know, just about 2 billion EC or 140 bucks. The second option is two 100% off tier 6 ship coupons. These are 100% off two T6 C store ships of your choice the, that are traditionally 3000 Zen. So none of the legendary ships, just your standard C store ships. And the third option is 1,500 Lobi Crystals. Now, this is the most expensive option if you were trying to obtain it outside of the event, because Lobi is very expensive to acquire. You're typically getting somewhere around 5.4 Lobi per lockbox, according to the very large 10,000 plus opening samples that I've done and others have done. Which means that it would take you about 278 Master Keys to obtain 1,500 Lobi traditionally. And with the current prices of keys on the market, right at around 12.7 billion, I think, or 12.7 million last I checked, that would be about 3.5 billion energy credits or $280. So Lobi is definitely something that's going to appeal to a lot of people with me saying how much, you know, it costs to obtain. But I'll talk about that here in a few minutes. I, I wouldn't focus too much on Lobi unless you're really far at endgame. Now, I want to dive a little bit deeper into the Premium Tier 6 Ship Choice Pack. As I mentioned, this is going to be the most popular option as it lets people freely obtain a ship that is normally obtained via gambling or paying very high amounts of energy credits on the player exchange or via private trade channels. The restrictions to this option are that you only get to choose ships that were available in prior years before the uh, this event campaign. So, an example, for this 2022 event campaign, no ships that launch in 2022 are going to be available as an option. So when the Cerritos comes out on May 10th here, that's not going to be available as an option to select until the 2023 event campaign. So no ships that launch this year will be available in the event campaign running this year, if that makes sense. Now, I want to expand on why people get excited with getting one of these ships that are normally attained via gambling uh, free to play. And I want to expand into just how atrocious the drop rate is for these things, because I don't think most people fully grasp just how bad the drop rates are. 
So when it comes to lockboxes, this is all gathered from player data. It's, it's not data mined or anything like that. This is just from very large opening samples that myself and others have done. For the first 300 lockboxes you open, you have a 0.3% chance to win a ship. Once you hit 300 lockboxes opened, that goes up to 2.4%. That is called a pity system. In some games, they would have a guaranteed drop after a certain amount of lockboxes, or whatever that game's equivalent is, loot crates, whatever. In this game, it just increases your chance to win slightly, so you have to understand that you can put 500 bucks in by 500 bucks worth of keys, and there is still a chance that you won't get a ship. So lots of people are very excited to get these things free to play. When it comes to the promotional packs, uh, the promotional ships are a little bit more expensive typically. They're the ones that usually cost around 1.8 billion, sometimes upwards of 2 billion. Those have a 0.7% drop rate for the first 140 packs you open. And after the first 140 packs, that goes up to 7%. So you do have a better chance to win, but, you know, with either the promo packs or the, the lock boxes, that costs you around $300 worth of the, the packs or keys to even hit the pity system. And that doesn't even guarantee that you're getting a ship. So that is why people are excited to get these things free to play and it's why so many are very hard on the gambling in this game because the gambling is very atrocious with those drop rates and i say that as somebody that opened 10,000 lockboxes last year the drop rate is horrible so to expand on the premium tier 6 ships i do want to just make sure you if you're you're going with this option that you have as much information available to you as possible to select the best ship that's going to suit you. Uh, there is, as I mentioned, an in-game list on the reward info thing on the event tab that will give you a list of all the ships, but it's not going to let you view their stats, traits, or consoles. So I'm going to have a link in the description and in a pinned comment for this event campaign prize list on the STO wiki. This will give you a full list of all the ships that you can choose, and it will let you click on them to view the stats, consoles, traits, whatever. Make sure to check that out and do your research because you don't want to spend a year grinding for something and then choose a ship that you're not going to like. The next option is the 100% off tier 6 coupons. These are just allowing you to get any two standard $30 sea store ships for free. This is a good option if you're a new player or if you're somebody that has a lot of characters and wants to unlock ships that all of your characters can use. Out of the three options you get with the event campaigns, these T6 coupons are the only ones that are going to have an account-wide effect. Both the premium tier 6 ships and the, the lobby options are going to get you things that are character-specific. But these T6 coupons are unlocking sea store ships, and sea store ships are available account wide. They're reclaimable if you discard them. Whereas the other stuff, the lobby and the premium tier 6 ship, if you discard them, you're not getting them back. So if you're somebody that plays on lots of characters and you're looking for the most value for a bunch of characters, that's where the T6 coupons would come in. And if you're a new player, you don't have much money to put into the game, you might want to consider this because that's too decent ships that you'd be able to get you might be able to get something like the the arbiter for the emergency weapon cycle trait and you know just do your research with whatever build you're doing there but there's a lot of really good ships and traits and consoles in the c store i would not completely ignore the t6 coupon option if you're a new player or like i said you're somebody with multiple characters that you want something that's going to be usable on all those characters Next up, we have the 1500 Lobby Crystals. This option is really great for those of you that are more advanced into the game and have specific Lobby gear that you're after, certain sets, things like that. The other people that are really going to benefit from the Lobby Crystals are those that mostly care about playing the Exchange. And the reason for that is that the Lobby Crystals are the only things, the only reward here that you can actually convert to energy credits. The T6 coupons you get and that premium ship are going to be bound to you. You cannot sell them. However, the Lobby Crystals, you can buy certain items that are not bound to you. So you can, if you wanted, you could choose the Lobby Crystals and then pick up some Lobby ships during a sale and convert that into just some raw EC if that was what you wanted to do. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, but I do just want to point out that that is an option for you. 
And while acquiring Lobi is very expensive, you know, I talked about how it takes 278 keys to acquire this much Lobi. The fact is that the return, if you wanted to sell Lobi items and ships, would be a fraction of, you would get back a fraction of what it would cost to actually obtain that Lobi. So if you're a more veteran player and you're just looking for a really solid option, you want to have some Lobi there for if any new traits come out, which there will be with the uh, Cerritos. I'm not going to get into what they are, but there's probably going to be one that I think a few people are going to want. So uh, having Lobi for things like that is going to be very beneficial if you're a more serious endgame player. Now, I do want to point out, too, that there is a way to exploit the Lobi option. And as a you know, as I mentioned before, Lobi itself is bound. Uh, most of the gear that you can get with Lobi is also bound, like the, the set pieces. However, there are some Lobi items like the ships, some of those traits, costumes, pets that are not bound and they can be sold or transferred to other accounts. So if you're picking on up on what I'm saying here, if you have alternate accounts, as in ones that have different emails and logins, not just alternate characters on your same account, then you can have those alternate accounts also run the events. They can select Lobi as the reward and that they can transfer the tradable Lobi items over to your main account. So... If you are somebody that plays the game quite a bit, you actually have multiple accounts and maybe just have a very basic setup on them. You can use them to take the lobby option on the event campaign and dump that stuff over to your main and you'll be able to get some stuff pretty easily free to play. So take advantage of that if you are one of those people. If you're one of those people, you probably already know that and are mad that I'm even mentioning it in a very public setting. I'm sorry. So to conclude this video, the event campaigns are a huge incentive to players to keep logging in and playing events. It's Cryptic is using this to keep us playing during the periods between the major events. And the rewards are well worth it. Like the things, some of these things would cost you hundreds of dollars to obtain traditionally. So if you're somebody playing the game long term, this is very well worth keeping up on. I will be following up this video with recommendations for what to choose for the premium T6 ship. I'm going to be doing top fives over the next couple of weeks for a variety of playstyles, of which many of those ships will be available as options via the event campaign, so stay tuned for that. And lastly, I just want to say yet again, thank you to all channel members, Patreon members, and Twitch subscribers. You guys have been insanely helpful over the past couple of months and have helped me get through some real life things that just suddenly popped up. That's going to be it for today's video. Thanks for watching. See you all next time.